Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. We partner with J Intel, a nonprofit organization that provides educational programs to promote emotional and mental health while building our identity in Christ. In this podcast series, you will learn about me, Kimir Baker, the CEO and founder of J Intel, and other life changers. We inspire, equip, and support you along your journeys. By the renewal of our minds, we overcome life challenges. We renew and rise up. We are so excited to have you back at the Healing Peace Podcast. If you were with us last week, you know that we started out having an opportunity to listen to a previous interview that I did with Paige Clark from 9 to 5 Faith. We're going to pick up after this commercial break where we're talking about how in the world did I get off that hamster wheel and how do I check myself? Come back after this commercial break. Our 501c3 nonprofit organization, J Intel, and A Healing Peace are looking for community partners to support our mission. We are bridging the gap between faith-based and therapeutic resources. Consider partnering with us. Go to jintel.org slash donate and contribute. By contributing in this manner, you ensure that we continue to spread this inspiring and encouraging message. So how do you check yourself when it comes to like, especially running your own business, Mm -hmm. like doing just like a self inventory of like, one, you're the person in charge. So like the line stops with you, but also like, there's always going to be something to do. Exactly. And I will say that has been my journey for years, learning to rest in him. And so we're always having that conversation. Girl, when are you going to sit down and just rest (laughs) and let me get things done? Yeah. Yeah, And in April, I ended up getting sick and I Mm. thought that I had COVID and I thought I had pneumonia. It was some respiratory bug that just took me out. And for two weeks, as I was sick, there was things I just couldn't do because I wasn't feeling well. But that's when I saw God doing things with the nonprofit, like doors just start opening up. And I was like, oh, so basically you telling me I'm in your way. <laughs> so <laughs> you had to, to sit me down and All right. get me yeah. sick so you can start opening up the doors because my innate nature is to work. And he yeah. tells me all the time, Come here, you can't work your miracle. Mm. And so, so how do I check myself? I got sick. <laughs> and it's like, right. I, I try not to get to that extreme, but sometimes because I get so fixated, God will provide interruptions to kind of get me back on track. Yeah. And sometimes I'm, I'm in tune enough where I can stop myself. But it depends on what my priorities are at that time. So, yeah, yeah, I can definitely understand that because I am surrounded by people who not to call you stubborn, but might be a little bit stubborn about God's lessons. And Mm -hmm. like you have to like be bed bound for two weeks in order for you to like completely understand it and just like watch God move. Me and my husband just went through something similar where I'm like, oh, and God just wanted to tell you, like, you learn lessons the hard way. Like, this is how you learn lessons. So this is where we're at. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because even while I was sick, because initially I thought I just had a cold. So I had prepared to be out for five days, Mm. but it just kept going. And so it's it's like, are you listening? And I'm like, no. Okay, we keep going. Are you there yet? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. Exactly. And I always think too, like, I'm actually, ironically enough, I'm doing a series about rest right now Mm. and like the different types of rest. Yeah. And like, I, I think, I mean, I didn't realize this up until maybe a few years ago, but like there's different types of rest and we need Mm -hmm. to be providing rest for our whole selves. Yeah. And Uh, you know, we, we just think rest is like binge watching Netflix and sleeping until noon, like cool. But really like 
that will only maybe fix, you know, physical and mental rest. But what if your rest needs to be social or emotional or spiritual? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. which rest do you need? And and if you're feeling drained after your rest, you're probably not getting the right type. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. And even for me, where my lesson comes in the most is sleep rest. Mm because of the to-do list, I, I got to get this done. Mm. And someone reminded me that when you're not sleeping, you're not giving your body the opportunity to recover. Yeah. And you don't make up that time. Like your body never fully recovers what you deprived it of. Yeah. Because you will think, okay, well, Saturday, I'll just sleep in. And and that's a myth. Like you, you still didn't get what your body need to fully function. Mm-hmm. And then another thing that a friend really encouraged me with and wanted me to have the visual is that when you're sleeping, God is working. Mm. So why not take a break yeah. <laughs> and keep working? Yeah. Instead and of thinking that it's all on me. It's like, yeah. no. He's, oh, he's yeah. 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 And I heard something said about the Sabbath in the same in the same regard as like, do you think you're so like as a gut check of like, do you think you're so important that the world is going to stop if you're not in it for a day? Like that's like, that's not the truth. Like ego check, like, you know, the world can exist without you for a day. So take it off because God told us to. Yeah, for sure. And yet we're having this conversation because it's so challenging to do it. Yes. Yes, exactly. It is tough to do it. And it also, I I think it's really fun. I mean, I I love when like science is like scratching its head at like mysteries that like God created. Oh. And sleep is one of them. You know, I I have done a lot of research into sleep and there are people who do it professionally and they're like, "Why do we need like this like why is our bodies hardwired for this chunk of time? Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's like a third of your life spent asleep." Yeah. Like, why have our bodies evolved to that point? When really, I'm like, I think there's like a divine reason for it. I don't have the answer for it. But I think there's a divine reason that God created us to need sleep. Yeah. And we just like don't know it. Or at least science doesn't know it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. They'll give you some some ideas, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll they'll tell you what happens if you don't sleep. Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of things that happen when you don't sleep but like stuff especially around like dreams and your brain and like Mm -hmm. like why the why we don't what the the why we need sleep is only in the the side effects and the symptoms Mm -hmm. of not sleeping it's not in the actual like core of why we actually need sleep as humans right anyways yeah. that's my aside <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm like looking at my book right now and i just yeah. did a video about it and it's called why we sleep yeah i'm like one of the things that's so clear is that you like to learn oh yeah definitely uh a, a bookworm reader learner <laughs> yeah all right let's kind of bring it back bring it around you've kind of hinted at it but i want you to go a little bit more in depth of what kind of does your day look like when it comes to rising, being with God, and then like family? Do you have kids? I don't have kids, so I, I don't have children. Which okay, is- okay. Are you are you married? I'm not married. Okay. okay, so you are taking care of yourself, and yes. like, so I have the least amount of distractions, <laughs> but also like. I think it's a little bit easier to like get away with not doing stuff when you're like mm-hmm. alone. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, you but- have, I think in general, you have to be deliberate. Yeah. And, and that was one of the things why I like Paul, because no matter what, he was very mm-hmm. deliberate in everything that he did. But for me, in terms of my, my morning routine, which I know those who are married and have children, this is probably not possible for them because of time and commitments. But for myself, about two years ago, we was reading a a book together as our church fellowship. And one of the things they talked about was as soon as you wake up in the morning, drop to your knees and pray, Mm. even before you go to the rest. So for the past two years, that's been my routine. I Mm. get up and I drop and I pray. 
And it's just five minutes. It's not my full prayer because I still do have to go to the restroom. <laughs> yes. And you need a coffee if you drink coffee or tea. Or yeah. Yeah. I, I still need to, to wake up. But that that has been really insightful because I'm acknowledging him. And I'm because you, you I think you, you might have received text or or quotes about having God first thing in the morning. Well, mm-hmm. I can, I, I can say, yes, I do. Yeah. And and then after that, in the restroom break, I have the privilege of being able to sit and, and study God's word. And mm-hmm. so my quiet times um, is usually about 30 to 45 minutes and, and just digging and allowing him to speak into me. But I will say I get in trouble at times because I will break that to do email or internet stuff so I can post things about the organization. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when I do that, I'm so disgusted at myself. Like, you know, this is supposed to be your time with God. Mm -hmm. You allow these distractions to come in. Why are you going on social media first? Right. And so it it still is a level of discipline. Yeah. Um, Because if if it's not in a sense of me making the effort, I will make the effort to do something else. Mm. And it happens very quickly and easily. And so, but when I'm at home with my family, I don't have that luxury. I don't have the luxury of having this quiet space for 30 to 45 minutes. I don't have the luxury to get out of the bed and pray on my knees first thing in the morning. And so when I'm in that context, when things are, you have family to take care of, I have to make sure that I'm I'm praying throughout the day. I have to make sure that I find five, 10, 15 minutes where I can read a psalm and, and be refreshed in my spirit, where I'm able to just find that that little time, that nugget for me so that God can calm my spirit. And so it took me a moment because I will feel guilty. I'm like, oh, but normally you're like at 45 minutes and now this is like 10, mm, five. Yeah. And, and so I had to learn how to be creative in seeking him throughout the day and even repeating scriptures mm. uh, throughout the day so that I'm still being reminded of his word. Or even if I'm doing a chore or if I have to drive somewhere where I put something on immediately that's sharing about him just mm. to reconnect my spirit yeah. because living is, is there and it's legit and it just happens and and for those mothers who have small kids, it's like it's nearly impossible even going to the restroom there at the door. Right. Can I just go to the bathroom? <laughs> you're like, oh. And then you try to lock yeah. the door and you hear him chuggling. You're like, oh my goodness. And so, so you have to be more creative to have that union with him. Yeah. But I know that if I am not deliberate in that level of distraction or family environment, then at some point it will come out. Someone will be like, Come here, you're being real short to me. I'm like, No, I'm not. Be like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Or, or, or like I said before, I'm just thinking about me. Oh, you did this wrong. And, right. and it's because I haven't had that time with him. Mm. And and so when I when someone checks me from my character shortness, then I know, girl, you need to go spend your time, go outside, walk around the house, even if it's for five minutes, cry out to do something where you communion with him. Yeah. And I think, too, like you even touched on something that I ha- haven't considered before of like that guilt of like not spending enough time with God at that, like when you have that guilt or just, I, I guess maybe that conviction, right. Yeah. It's making it about you too. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, like it's like, I feel bad. Cause I'm, I didn't do this, but then like we're able to, I think if we reframe that, into like what you were saying earlier is like God wants to be spending this time with us. Yeah. Yeah. And because even if you don't reframe it and you stay in that mindset, what happens is you feel so guilty and it just keeps continuing to the point that you just give up Mm -hmm. altogether. Yeah. Because now 
you just feel so poorly about yourself. And then it reflects in other things that you do throughout the day. And, and so I definitely gone down that path many times and had to reevaluate and, and seek deliverance with, even if I think about him in a given moment, oh, that that's actually really good because mm-hmm. we can go on autopilot and, and just do all those things. But if even if we allow ourselves to pause in our day and think about him and even say in that thought, God, I just love you. Yeah. Why wouldn't he want to hear that? Yeah. Like, oh, my daughter loves me. Look at it. Yeah. She's just pausing just to tell me that she loves me today. Yeah, for sure. And when you, when you mentioned kids in the bathroom door, it just took me back to this funny video that I wish I could share, but it's my, my nephew and my brother-in-law is in the shower and my nephew is literally on the floor looking underneath the door frame like, Dada! Like he's like a one and a half. Dada! Dada! And you just hear him talking back and forth. And my sister took a video of it. And I was just like, that's so funny because it is like really true. Like I don't have kids either. But yeah, it is true that they are um, literally at the bathroom waiting for you. Just looking for you. Yeah. yeah. I think and- one one thing too of like that just sticks out to me is just doing that little bit. I I fall into that trap, especially when it comes to like working out the days Mm -hmm. where I'm like, I got nothing. Like I have nothing in the tank and I just go, okay, just go try to do as much as you can in the gym. And then that's going to be enough for today. And, and, And whatever I end up doing, or when I'm actually working out, if I'm like, I am just be and I can't continue any longer. I'll look, okay, I got 15 minutes in. 15 minutes is better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then for those who don't have those distractions and do have the opportunity to invest in that time, I, I I've learned for myself that I'm better equipped to meet my challenges if I spend that time with God in the morning so that He's guiding me throughout the day. Because mm-hmm. there was one period where I was like, I'll do that at nighttime. Mm-hmm. And then what happens at nighttime? You're tired. You, you can't yeah. really grab hold of anything. And you don't have anything to refer to. Yeah. Because the day is over in terms of pulling you out of circumstances. Right. Yeah. And so after my Bible time, I go exercise. And then after that, I start working. Yeah. And, the, and then the grind starts. Yes. I, the other thing, too, that that stood out to me is the discipline in, in all of these conversations I'm having, especially on this podcast, I'm realizing that there is, I mean, an intended or unintended kind of uh, stereotype that Christians don't have to be disciplined in their faith or like they don't have to schedule out their faith. Almost every person I've, right. Every person I've talked to, almost every person I've talked to on this podcast has talked about how they schedule out time and they are disciplined in their time with God. And I think that I don't want to normalize that and normalize the, it's okay if it doesn't feel naturally, if it doesn't naturally come about, it's okay if it doesn't, because guess what? That's just the world that you're living in right now. Yeah. And and I think a, a lot of that stems from God being invisible. Mm. If he was in a physical representation and you had access to him physically throughout the day, it wouldn't be any different than your people relationships where right. for you being married, like you want to spend, sometimes you want to spend time with him, and sometimes you need a break from him. But generally, <laughs> Yes. Most of the time I want to spend time with him. Yes. Right. But you stay together because there's things that you really appreciate about him and he brings things in your life. And so you have something tangible and physical to draw you back to him. And if he wasn't physically there after a while, you will miss him and you will mm-hmm. feel like something is missing in your life. And so because God is invisible, we don't have that physical connection, that physical reminder, that physical, like, uh, I'll do anything for you. And so 
that's why it comes to, okay, it requires discipline Mm -hmm. because I'm having this relationship with someone that I can't physically see, even though at times you will physically have his awareness and how he's orchestrating things in your life. Right. And then you get even excited because you're like, he's real. I can tell you did this and da, da, da. Right. But without those little kisses, as I call them, we can be That's oblivious. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh gosh, can- I love that. <laughs> we can be oblivious to him working behind the scenes. Yeah. And I, I think, I think too, oh my God, like I'm a little choked up because that was so beautiful. Just little, God's little kisses. I think when we look at other religions or ways of thought to what you see is that attempt to grasp mm-hmm. at the physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you think of like, even like having statues and even in Christian history, right? Like there was like this whole, you know, uproar if like Jesus should be in a picture or not. Right. Like there is the whole controversy around that. But when you look at a lot of other religions, a lot of them, either if there's like a city that they're supposed to go to because it's extra sacred or Mm -hmm. that's how they can access God or even like, having a statue or some kind of idol or, or what have you, even like, if I'm going to make some people mad about this, but like with the new age stuff, you have like crystals and you Mm -hmm. have, you know, things like that in the world where people are just like trying to grasp onto something. And I think Mm -hmm. that's like a really good point is like, we're just, I think a lot of them are trying to make sense of of the world that God has given us. Yeah. Yeah. Because we need something visual to connect with. Yeah. And God's answer for that, because we know that people got in trouble with the idols and he was like, hey, that's not me. And his answer was, if you want to remember me, just write my word everywhere mm-hmm. in your house. Yeah. He's like, that. that's how you remember me because there's truth yeah. in that word. And as you hold on to that truth, you actually hold it on to me. Yeah. And also like communion. Mm -hmm. And taking in, you know, the bread and the cup like that. Do this in remembrance of me. Like, right. right? That's how. And I think, too, like one thing that I've really been leaning into, I'd say, like over the past few months is really looking at not artwork that I idolize, but Mm -hmm. more so like artwork and things of beauty and things of creativity that just remind me of God. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then when I'm in my space, I'm able to look at that and be like, oh, like that's mm-hmm. that's God's presence in, in yeah. my life. Not not the actual thing, but it is the reminder. It's like a post-it note. The post-it note's not the actual thing that you have to do. It's the reminder of the thing you have to do. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if post-it could actually do the work? Right. I feel like that's like a that's going to be like coming down the word like. Uh, oh, with the AI, it's an AI company. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. I'm like, I was just working on this social post before um, we had this, and I was on a call with this group that I'm a part of called the Writers Block. And um, the gal who's speaking this week, she said, "AI is not the Imago Day." I was like, "Oh, yes!" Like full body chills in the best way, like. AI is not the Imago Day, in, in so much so, like we were talking about writing and, you know, AI is going to take our jobs and everything. But it was like, no, like we are made in the image of God. And when we write, we are able to reflect that too. For sure. So, yeah. All the beautiful things. Well, Kimir, this conversation has been so good. And I like, I can't wait to like look back over the transcript of this and just like mm-hmm. write down all the little things like God's kisses. I'm I'm saving that one that, you know, that's going to go on my whiteboard next to me. But one question I always like to end with is what is a tangible faith discipline that someone can enact in their life this week to help grow their faith? Yes. And so <laughs> I, I, I chuckle because living by myself, it's easy for me to talk to myself. They say you don't yeah. do it. But we all know we do it. Oh, right? everyone does. Yeah. And and so in this context, instead of being told you can't do it, just talk to God throughout mm. the day. 
And and as I shared earlier, even in, in that five minutes or that one or that 30 second, 10 second, just even say, God, I love you today. Mm. And and as you do that, allowing yourself to connect to his spirit so that as you continue throughout the rest of your day, you're not just on autopilot. There's an awareness mm. that he's with you and there's an awareness that you are drawing close to him, even when the chaos is, is not possible. Love that. I'm not going to add anything else. We're going to end on that. Thank you so much, Kamir. Uh, where can people find you if they want to connect with you, if they want to see the curriculum that you're putting out there? Tell us all the things. Yes. So even though the name of the company is really long, we are known as J Intel. So if you go to our website, J-I-N-T-E-L.org, you can learn more about myself, our story, how we came about, uh, the services that we offer. And um, we also have on there just articles to continue on your in terms of your emotional wellness and, and just learning and gaining insight. And then, of course, we're on Facebook. So on Facebook, we're jntail.org. There we go. There we go. And I'll also add it in the show notes so people can find it with complete yeah. ease. I'm, Thank I'm you so much. Names. I'm creating new names. Yes. You have all of our details. You know all about J and Tail. Thank you for listening to this wonderful interview with myself and Paige Clark from 9 to 5 Faith. We had a great conversation. And you know what? Next week we're doing this again. I was talking, like I said, and you get the opportunity to hear another great interview of someone interviewing me. Until then, enjoy your week and see you next time.